Welcome everyone to this Tech Talk um, sponsored by the Collab Lab. Uh, I'm Andrew, I'm the founder of Collab Lab and um, I'm super excited to have Mike Lambert here who is a mentor at Collab Lab and um, a coworker of mine at Zapier where we both work. Um, but uh, yeah, I wanna go through a couple little, little kind of housekeeping things before I hand it off to Mike, but um, this talk will is being recorded and it's gonna be posted to YouTube. I will post the link to the meetup page uh, either tonight or tomorrow, whenever I get it uh, put up there. Um, if it's helpful for you, we have live captions of, um, enabled. So, um, you know, if that's something that you would find helpful to follow along with, uh, just hit the, the uh, closed caption button uh, in Zoom and it, um, it's automated captions. So they're not perfect, but they are sometimes hilariously wrong. So it's kind of fun to follow along with those. Um, as with everything at Collab Lab, uh, this meetup is governed by our code of conduct. So um, you can see the URL there on the screen. Uh, it's on our website. Um, you know, it boils down to you know, don't be a jerk to each other and that kind of thing. But um, you know, we want to make sure that we uh, create a a safe space for everyone to participate. Um, you can you know be here, feel safe, and um, yeah, if there are any kind of um, if there are any issues going on during the call, you're welcome to. Private message me and I will. Recording um, in progress. I'll, I will help take care of it. So I'll take care of it. All right. Um, and and now people are starting to come in. I'm trying to give my spiel at the same time. So anyway, um, this is sponsored by the Collab Lab. The Collab Lab is a uh, a nonprofit, a U.S. nonprofit that provides um, collaborative project practice to early career developers to to learn how teams work together. So it's um it's not really about learning to code. It's more about um, learning how to uh, how to work on a team, so pair programming and um, submitting, you know, pull requests, doing code reviews, demoing your work, participating in retros, all the team processes and things. So, um, so yeah, so we are, uh, um, like I said, we're a nonprofit. So we we do the only money that we take in is really through donations. So if you um, if you are in a place in your career, um, like I know Eddie is, you can sell because he has a tie on in his picture. Um, uh, you know, maybe consider uh, donating to to the Collab Lab. We we'll use the money to um, to pay for things like Zoom licenses and web hosting and all that kind of stuff that we need to uh, kind of do the program. So, with all that, um, yeah, super excited to have Mike here to uh, talk to us about rolling your own Redux, which I didn't know that was possible. I mean, I obviously it's possible. Somebody wrote it, but um, yeah, I'm excited to uh, to hand it off to you, Mike. Go for it. Ooh. Thank you very much. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes, cool. Yep. All right, awesome. So uh, as Andrew mentioned, uh, my name is Mike and I am a uh, mentor and at uh, the Cloud Lab as well as a front end engineer at Zapier. Um, and today we are going to be uh, kind of trying to reconstruct Redux, um, but some things to kind of uh, qualify that is uh, this is not like a production ready Redux. We're not uh, like Redux itself is significantly more powerful than what we're going to be doing. Um, and the goal here is really um, to kind of demystify some of the parts of it, um, which we'll, we'll go over as we do it. Um, so the way that going to structure this is going to kind of, we're going to pretend like we are uh, a developer on the job. And I have a PR that was open uh, related to a ticket, um, which we'll walk through and we'll spend about five minutes on that. And then we're going to spend the majority of the time trying to refactor based on some code comments that are in the ticket. Um, and then at the end, we'll have uh, if you have any questions or as we're going along, if you want to just um, unmute yourself and ask a question or um, in the chats, I'll try to keep an eye on it. Or if Andrew wants to, um, you know, call out uh, if there's anything in the chat. Um, I think some of this stuff, like pretty ambitious on the time frame, So we may not get through everything, um, but I do have a, uh, a version uh, in a branch that's that's open. Um, that if, uh, if you want to, you can take a look at later. Um, and also I may be referring to it as we go through, um, just if, 
if I get like stuck, forget the code. Um, but at the end of this, the goal is that you have a basic idea of uh, Redux and really the, the flux pattern, um, which is what Redux uh, implements and um, an idea of what, what are actions, dispatch, uh, reducers, selectors, uh, thunk middleware, which if we can get there, we'll try to, uh, to write, uh, and the, the Redux store. So with that, let's get started. Um, the, uh, I have this, uh, this repo that's called Roll Your Own Redux, that's at my GitHub. Um, and we have there a fancy pull request that, uh, that I opened. Um, and this is implementing a ticket, um, which is this, oh, this project, this, uh, this ticket, which is currently in review, right? Um, and this is, as a user, I want to fill out a form uh, with my name and birthday so that I can review it before submitting. Um, and with this, the user will start at a root URL. Um, and then they can input their first and last name, and then they uh, click next and they go and can input their birthday. And then at the end, there's like a summary screen that, uh, that displays their birthday and uh, name. Um, and then the user should be able to click back buttons uh, and forward buttons to be able to, um, to go through and the URL should be changing. And then the buttons are also disabled. Um, as where uh, if the uh, input is not valid. So if we go back to the pull request, this is a um, good pull request. Uh, we have some images here. Um, so we have a, a screen where we get started and you click that and then you go, um, you can see a lot of time spent on CSS here. Um, really, uh, really good looking stuff. Um, but you input your first and last name, then click next, and then you input uh, your birthday. And full disclosure, today is actually my birthday. Um, so yay. And then uh, you get to the last uh, screen and you uh, can see this, right? My name and my birthday. So um, from here, let's take a look at uh, some of the code comments that we got. Um, so. Uturunku1 um, has commented that uh, she really likes how my uh, how I separated out the presentational uh, components from the uh, from the business logic um, here and really like separation between pages, which um, we'll go through in just a second so you can get an idea of what um, what the code is structured like. Um, and and then she made a comment where she's asking uh, for a little bit of structure within state management. And, um, and this is a lot of the times why people would start to implement Redux um, as opposed to using normal uh, global state or um, flux in general would be to, to provide a scalable pattern um, that can be used. Uh, and so she's asking why, why don't we try to implement um, this, this kind of scalable pattern? And then um, she's got this nice little gift at the end, um, tell me how good of a job I did. And uh, just asking that we do a little bit of refactor work. Cool. So let's take a look at our code as we have it right now. So right now, all of the state is being handled uh, in, the, in our app JS. Um, and we're using React Router um, and we have these components uh, which are in our pages folders and there's one for each of the URLs. So there's like a name, birthday, uh, and the user details, right? And then the home as well, which is where we're defaulting to. Um, and then we have some components and the components are purely presentational. So like if we go into, let's just take name. So the name, will uh, render our name form component, um, which is just uh, presentational. And right now name is just concerned with navigation. So name just like does the navigation. 
Um, but all of our all of our state is is up here and it's kind of this this jumbled mess. So we're going to uh, start off by trying to um, make some uh, yeah refactor to the flux pattern. So what is the flux pattern? Um, so essentially the it uh, operates like like react with a one uh, uh, yeah single data flow essentially where actions um, go up their state that's held um, above and then selectors these um, things that we'll see uh, in a little bit are used to get uh, things out of the state and pass it back into the view so the view this is our our application what we're seeing and everything the actions they get dispatched um, and an action is just an object that is uh, is a key of type uh, has a type and a value which again we'll see in a second it doesn't make sense right now but it will hopefully um, those get dispatched and then uh, they update a reducer which a reducer is just uh, a function that returns a copy of state with an action having been fired inside of it. And again, we'll see this in a second. And then um, selectors just retrieve the state from the view. So let's start off with this uh, reducers, which just the statement reducer returns a copy of state, right? And so we're gonna have uh, just our global state. We'll go const state uh, equals set state, we're just gonna use a use state. So use state. Um, and we're going to, our state is going to be structured so that we have a name uh, and the name's initial state is going to be just like this. And then we're going to have a birthday and the birthday's initial state is just going to be this right and right now we're just duplicating some state um but this is just like the overall structure of what our state's going to look like and so we have these reducer we have a these producers we're going to have a uh, name reducer and we're going to have a birthday reducer and then uh just for some fun organization stuff. We're just gonna uh, export these out of uh, index.js. Uh, so we're gonna just say like everything that's inside of uh, birthday is gonna get exported and then export, oh, we need a from everything that's in uh, name is also going to get exported. Um, Cool, and so now our, remember the reducer just uh, returns a copy of state. So we're gonna have our reducer, our name reducer, right? Um, I just got something in, in the way. Okay, uh, so our name reducer is going to be a function okay, for cons name reducer. Um, and it's going to take the state and it is going to return the state. Okay. And it equals there. And then we're just going to have it uh, default to uh, the initial state, which we outlined in our app. Hang on. So our app here, we have this initial state. So we're going to go const initial state equals that. And then uh, this means that essentially if no state is passed in, then we're gonna be returning this initial state, which is this. So now inside of here, we can just go like, um, cool. So now name is name reducer and we can invoke that. And this is effectively the exact same thing as what we just had, right? Um, and so we can do the same thing with our birthday reducer. Okay. Uh, 
Um, and we'll copy paste this here. Initial state is that, and then we will have our birthday reducer. Cool. Um, so now let's uh, let's just take a look at our application real quick. Um, and oh. Yeah, so uh, inside of our application, uh, we can just see the state and we're gonna use this as we go through so we can um, just yeah, kind of be monitoring it. Um, okay, cool. So we have, um, we have our state and we need to uh, be able to update it. Right now, let's just take a look at our update first name. The way it currently works is we have this update first name that's passed into name, and then that gets passed down uh, via prop drilling into, uh, into this name form, update first name, and then on change, um, we take the value from it. Uh, and then currently in AppJS, we're just taking that value and then we're updating uh, using set name to update state, right? So what we want to do is be able to use set state to update the, this global state, right? And we're going to be using um, our actions, uh, which is the second argument that uh, is passed in here. And um, returning a copy of the state with the action having been done upon it. Um, so our first action that we're going to have is going to be uh, called, uh, we'll call it update first name. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and declaring this as a, as a constant, um, because it's going to be referred to in a few in a few places. So we're going to then have our uh, our action creator, um, which is update first name. And this is more or less going to be like this, but um, so it's going to have a value. And then uh, it's going to return uh, a type which is the update first name. And then it is going to have a value, which is this value. And so reducers are structured in switch case. Uh, and we're going to take a look at every time it sees action dot, it's going to look and evaluate uh, action dot type. And here that's first name. So we're gonna be like, okay, when I see update first name, what do I do? And so what we want to do is we're going to return a copy of state. We're using the spread operator to do like a shallow copy of it. And then ah, I'm in the birthday reducer. Nobody said anything. Oh. Uh, Hang on. Name reducer first, last, cool. And then birthday, we're going to go and just like get rid of everything. Cool. Okay. So in our name reducer, um, updates the first name, it returns a shallow copy of the state. And then we're going to update just the first name. So, oops, first is action dot value. Right. And so uh, we can kind of think about these working in in tandem, um, and hopefully it'll make make a little more sense as we uh, as we see it in action. So this is call what's called an action type because we can see it's the type. And then this is an action creator um, because it creates this uh, type value thing, right? So Mike, mm -hmm. can I ask you, yeah. since 
since we failed you a little, just a minute ago by not catching which file you were in, um, is it should it be update update name or is it? Oh no, no. Yeah, just update name. Okay, all right. Uh, and actually, it would be update first name. Ah, uh, right. There we go. Um, but I usually rely on like auto importing, so that one would have gotten deep into the code probably um, <laughs> had you not pointed it out. So thank you very much. Um, cool. So we've got our update first name here. We're gonna ditch that. And let's just try passing in this update first name into it. Um, this, let's see if that like works, I guess. Oh, so now we have these actions and this is undefined. So, um, so it's gonna error. So we're going to have the first time for the initial state, it's gonna be undefined and an uh, empty object. Uh, just so that we don't get a null pointer error on action.type. Um, and then the undefined, just so that we can have this in it, initial state go through first. But so now we come in here, we try to, um, to I'm, I'm typing right now or attempting to, and it's not working. Um, and the reason is because we're just calling update first name. Um, and there's nothing that like ties this into the reducer or in other words, set state is not getting called anywhere um, in order to actually update, right? So what we want to do is, um, can I just like make some space here? It's gonna be, good, be cluttered at first, but we're going to create this thing uh, called dispatch, which uh, is what we use in order to interact with an update state. Um, so again, if we look back here at our description, uh, actions are dispatched. And so we have dispatch, which takes an action. Um, and then it's going to call set state. Um, and in set state, there's a callback uh, where we can get the previous version of this state. And then um, we're going to return essentially a copy of it. Uh, and so it is going to, we're going to return. This is Sorry, an implicit, implicit return, but just, just to be more explicit, we'll do turn uh, that state. Uh, and then we have our two reducers. So we've got our name and we're going to invoke our reducer, our name reducer. Uh, and then we're going to be passing in the previous state. Uh, of her name, so just that state and our action. And then uh, we're also for our birthday, we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna invoke our reducer. Uh, birthday reducer and pre state of birthday uh, and pass in our action. So now what we want to do is actually dispatch this action. Um, and so we're going to be passing the action into, uh, into the dispatch. And so right here, this is our update first name. So uh, it was getting a value. Then we dispatch it with value. So um, so essentially dispatch, all it's doing is really just like updating state. Um, and if we go, let's see if this magically works. So we're not going to see it there, but if it works, uh, we would be getting, uh, whatever I type in and we can see in the state that it's getting updated. However, we're not seeing that because this is a uh, controlled component, um, meaning that the input field um, in the form is controlled by whatever is passed into it. So what we need to do is we need to take uh, our first property and then uh, pass that into the component. And so we take a look again at our flux pattern. We've got these selectors. And the selectors are what we use to get things out of out of state. 
Um, and so we'll have our other part that's a selector. Uh, and usually these are prefixed with get. Um, and so we'll have this get name. These are going to take state and it's going to return um, return a part of state. In this case, we're, the initial one is uh, get name. So it's going to, if we look back at our what our state looks like, it's gonna get all of this, the name and the birthday. And right now we're just gonna get the name and then we're gonna make another selector that's just gonna get first off. So um, I like to compose selectors, get first name. And this one takes state. And then this one is going to uh, use the, it's gonna be composed of the other one. So name, get name, or state. And then from this, we're just going to return name dot first. Cool. So now let's jump back into our app real quick. Um, and so we've got our state and you can see that our, uh, our selector was composed uh, so that it takes in the state. So now we can go and be like, okay, this first name is, uh, it's not gonna be this. Um, it's gonna be uh, uh, it's going to be get first name. And then we just pass in the state. Right. Um, so now let's take a look again and boom, right? Yay. Um, and we can see it getting updated here, right? So uh, now let's just try uh, to do the exact same thing for the last name, right? So there's a lot of different moving parts and this is what, um, what makes Redux really difficult because um, there's all of these little tiny, little tiny things. But when it comes down to it, a lot of it is just repetition. So here we've got our update last name and then the case for update last name is just that we're turning in copy of state, but instead of first, we're now going to do last and then the value and this is going to be almost the same, except this is now going to be called the update last name and update last name. So here, and then this one also gonna be almost the same. So now we're doing get last name. All right, and then if we jump back into our app, um, we can start off other way around. So we'll do get last name now, which we're passing in. And then this is going to be almost the same, except we are dispatching update last name. Cool. Um, um, line 73, please. I think you want to pass in state, not last name, right? Oh, yeah. Nice, good call, thank you. Sure. Cool, um, this would be a good spot for questions if anybody's totally confused. Um, anything? Feel free to jump off. Uh, you make it, off you make it look so it. easy. Oh, geez, thank you. This is all um, like when I, the last time I worked with Redux was a couple of years ago and it was, um, this all looks familiar, but it's just like, like why? Like, what's the benefit of like all the different little pieces? I don't know. Yeah, the, the thing that I really like about it is it separates concerns out really, really well. So if you think about it, like within our business logic, this is just concerned with these little tiny pieces, right? And then this, all it does is returns this like, uh, all it does is returns this object that has a type. And then this, all it does is looks at that and then does something. So like when it, I, I think that the main reason why would just be to have this pattern where it's very clear where things get updated, 
where we uh, derive state, like where we get it back. Um, but in a lot of cases, it's super duper overkill. Um, and, and so like you would definitely want to evaluate uh, for your team or your organization, what, what are the, the needs? You know, if, if you really need to have something that's like cookie cutter is going to look the same uh, across a really large organization, I think it, it makes sense. So you mentioned business logic. If you if you had a requirement to like transform the, the last name to uppercase or something, where would that business logic fit in? Um, yeah, so usually you would have the most of the business logic within the uh, the reducer itself. Mm -hmm. um, so you know if if that uh, if that was was the requirement, you would just like to uppercase this. Okay. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Um, Anything else? All right. Anybody else have questions? Anything that was, is this all, have people worked with Redux before and this is kind of familiar so far? Or? Cool. cool. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump into um, abstracting this a little bit more so that it looks a little bit more like Redux and less just Flux. From here, okay. Um, but if if anyone has any uh, any questions, just please do jump in. Um, so there's a package called React Redux that we use, and so we're gonna. Um, when I orig originally started doing this, I was I was like, you know what would be really cool is at the end if you can just um, instead of importing uh, importing uh, the dependency, you could just import directly from here. Um, and so we're going to make it look like this. So uh, we're going to be using uh, React context um, for this. And context here you use in order to uh, have a global state that's above everything else. So um, we're just going to create our context equals uh, create context. Um, and then the when you create the context, you give it like some initial values. And we have our dispatch. Um, we're just going to say that's it's like an empty. Uh, it's just some function, and then we're going to have get state, uh, which you'll see in a little bit. Um, but all this is going to be is just a function that returns the state. Um, and then within the React Redux package, there is a provider. Uh, and uh, this is a, a React component that is going to return the children uh, wrapped in this context. So context.provider, and then it returns the, the children. Um, and then now we're going to take all of our, some of our fancy work here, uh, put it in here, I'll import these things. Cool. And then um, for context, in order to actually give it the real value, um, you're gonna pass in this value um, object, which here, uh, we're going to have get state, which is just a function that returns state. Uh, and then we're going to have dispatch, which we wrote a preliminary non-abstracted version over here. Um, and so then we pass in dispatch. Cool. Uh, so then over in our app, we're going to, uh, wrap it all in our provider. And, uh, so then all of the children now have access to this state and the way that they can access uh, and play around with this state is with the use context hook. Um, so Redux also has 
uh, a hook of its own called uh, use dispatch. And all this does is takes the dispatch from our context. I want there. Uh, and then returns it. Oops, returns dispatch. Cool. And so uh, now anywhere inside of our context provider, we can get our dispatch. So uh, rather than prop drilling uh, this stuff in, we're now going to go into, ooh, and we can actually delete code. We'll, we'll save that for later. Um, so we're going to go into here and now we can do const dispatch equals use dispatch. And then we had our update first name. And this is, gets a value and it dispatches update first name. And then this one update last name. Again, gets a value and it dispatches update last name uh, with the value, which I did not do here. So this is just what was in our app. And we're now moving this into name because now we no longer have to um, have to prop drill that. Um, and we also want to get rid of some of uh, this stuff so we don't have to prop drill any of that. And so in order to do that, we're going to make our other uh, our other hook that uh, Redux gives us, which is uh, use selector. And this one is going to take one of our selectors that we'll pass into it. And it's going to uh, it's going to use the get state that we had just uh, that we had defined right here. Um, and so we're going to that the context and then uh it's going to return the select it's going to return what the selector invokes uh with the state passed into it okay so now in here we can go const use oh const first name selector and then we can pass in our first name, our, our uh, selector, get first name, right? So this has not been invoked yet. So we can then invoke it here with the get state on it. Um, and then here we can now say first name equals first name. Get last name. And last name equals last name. And then finally, we're going to make a new selector because um, we want to separate all business logic into exactly where it should be. And so we have this other is continue disabled and we can, use, we can derive that from the other ones. And so usually anytime you can like derive uh, some state from some other state, you can use a selector to do that. So we'll now have is continue disabled. And so this is going to get state uh, and const first name equals get first name. And then this one, we return uh, no first name or no last name. And this is essentially like, we don't want the button to be disabled, uh, enabled until one of, both of those are, uh, both first name and last name are, um, have been filled out. So then back in our name, we can do uh, is continue disabled. 
Let the get is continue disabled and pass that one in. Um, and then alphabetize those for fun. And then now our name, like this, and uh, Andrew was asking, you know, why would you ever use Redux? Aesthetically alone, look at how much prettier this is, right? Uh, concerns are really, really well separated out so that we're deriving state here, we're updating state here, um, and then we're doing any act, you know, um, actions upon it, uh, or like, yeah, business logic in here. Um, and so now let's see how broken we are. Uh, fun times. This is what I get for uh, not checking, not checking the work for a long time. Does anything work? Okay. So nothing works. Why is that? Any ideas? We had a bunch of stuff that said it was defined and not used. Is there something that's not wired up? So uh, this and then this one not use this batch these so those aren't used birthday reduce okay and our reducers okay so uh we have our provider which is coming from react redux and this provider has children, hey, rather than children. Uh, so this is part of the React API is that um, has anything that's wrapped inside of it is going to be given the name of chil children, but not children. Um, cool. So we can see this stuff magically getting updated. Yay. And then last name, and then we can see our, our uh, button continuing. Right. Um, cool. So, uh, I said fifteen minutes Q and A. Um, can you can stop me if you if you have questions? Um, I'm going to continue abstracting this for a little bit. Right. Um, so let's create within the. Uh, I want to say it's it's either in. I think create stores in Redux itself. So we're going to have another thing called uh, Redux. Uh, the other one is React Redux. And we're going to create to uh, create store. Um, so right now we have a we have a problem, um, which is this implementation is highly coupled to. Uh, these individual reducers. And so we want to abstract it so that it works for any reducers, right? Um, and so we have, uh, we're going to do create store. Um, and this is going to take a uh, bunch of reducers. You got two creates there again, Mike. Ah, geez. Thank you. All right, so this is gonna take a bunch of reducers um, and it's going to give us everything that, uh, that the provider over here would need um, in order to do it, um, to um, do the needly, essentially. Um, and so, and I have no idea what create store inside of um, Redux looks like. So this is all just me uh, being like, this is what we would need for the abstraction. Uh, so I'm I'm sure that someone who actually you know wrote Redux would be like, no, that's not at all what it does. Um, but I know that we need inside of this, we need to be able to get the initial state, uh, 
when we need to be able to get the reducers. And then we also have to deal with some middleware, um, which I don't think we'll get to today. But um, so the initial state, if we're going to pass in a bunch of reducers, um, we're going to use uh, object.entries, uh, which is going to um, essentially take, sorry, this is going to be an object um, that is going to look like uh, name colon name reducer. So it's going to be an object like that. And so we want to convert this into something that we can iterate over. Um, and so object.entries would convert that into uh, an array of uh, key value pairs. So give us a name, name reducer. And so then we can iterate over it. We're going to use dot reduce in order to iterate over it. Um, and uh, so uh, dot reduce has um, uh, has an accumulator and uh, the current uh, value, and then it um, allows us. It essentially is going to allow us for each of the current ones um, to re return the next. Sorry, I can't. Uh, it's it is going to for each iteration allow us to do something to the accumulated. Um, value and then return whatever we want, which is then passed on to the next one. Um, so what we want to do is just create a new object. Um, so this is the initial state. So we want to take get the key, have a new object that has a key, and then invokes the reducer with undefined and an empty object. Right, um, similar to what this looks like, but just abstracted so that it works with anything. Um, and so let's try this out. So this is just what the Redux API looks like. Um, you would call create store and pass it in. So we'll do const store equals create store. And then we're gonna pass in name name reducer uh and what was the other one birthday birthday reducer cool and then we are going to now pass that in okay and then so this could now just be store dot initial Date, is that what I called it? Is that about right? Or is it Redux? Uh, yeah, store dot initial state. And then this one um, within our reducers, we're going to use uh, object dot values again. Um, and just so I don't spend too long on this, we're just going to go and cheat. Uh, workflow with so this is if you'd like to at after this um, be able to go and see what the full thing looks like um, this is where you can find it uh, so you got Redux in here um, and so our new dispatch is going to look a little something like this. Um, cool. And so now this would be abstracted to essentially work with any reducers. Um, and yeah, um, the additional thing that we did not get to at all was the thunk middleware, um, which, yeah, we we're just not going to have time for that. Um, but I can try to explain a uh, purpose for it just right now. So, um, with, uh, Within this diagram that we have, um, the actions uh, are, we're considering those just, we've only seen synchronous actions, but there are times when it could be asynchronous, meaning it needs to go uh, 
update database and then come back and tell you that it updated the database correctly. Um, and in that case, you'd have to uh, be able to dispatch from inside your action. But if we look at our individual action right now, it's this is what it, that's all it is. So uh, we need to be able to access dispatch from inside of it. And so the thunk would, um, sorry, the thunk show an example would, uh, would have access to dispatch inside uh, birthday. So um, within the example here, we have a birthday validation to make sure that your birthday, that you are alive and not in the future. Um, and all it does is say like, is it before today? Um, but it's asynchronous. Um, and if in order for it to be a thunk, we could access dispatch from inside so we can dispatch the thing um, at a, and meaning actually interact with the, uh, the state. Um, and then in this example, there's also uh, a implementation of Redux thunk. Uh, which is, this is all it is. It just looks and says, was that action a function? If so, give it dispatch and get state. Otherwise, dispatch it. Um, and if you look inside of the actual Redux thunk package, like the logic is literally this simple. This is what Redux thunk uh, looks like. But yeah, so what did we learn today? Do we have a better idea, hopefully, kind of, of what actions are, um, more or less, right? The actions are just um, these type value thingamajigs. Um, dispatch is how we, um, it's more or less we saw, it's just like set state, uh, but calls it with, uh, with these reducers. Um, the selectors we use to, it's, just a pattern where we can pass one global state into it and they can pull things off of it. Um, the thunk middleware really uh, ripped through that one really quickly. And it's um, took me a long time to just like get my head around what a thunk is. Um, and then we also have this like abstraction for the, for the Redux store. Um, question. Sure, there's a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. It's so fast. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I, I mean, I understand. I think I know the answer to this, but just the difference between Redux and Flux, like what's the, like, what's the relationship between the two? Yeah. So, um, like Flux is really just this, this pattern, right? Um, and so Redux is just more or less an, an implementation of Flux, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, as a as a package so the uh so yeah i mean uh us saying roll your own redux we're not really doing that we're just kind of at some point uh copying the api to make it look like what the package would do but we're ultimately just uh implementing the flux pattern here mm -hmm. yeah you know there, there are other libraries that implement, implement flux is that true must be. Um, yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. Um, Redux is the one that I'm really familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then Thunk is the most, um, the simplest and most well, do well known middleware. Um, but there's also other ones uh, that are really, really cool, like Redux Saga, I love. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also one that uses. Um, what are they, RxJS, uh, in order to implement the middleware. And that one's really cool too. Um, the Redux observable, I think, something like that. Yeah. Cool. Ooh, what are the questions do people have? Was this uh, helpful, informative? Too much? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I don't have any questions. I was just going to say that was really cool. Thanks, Mike. Hey, Shane, I didn't even notice you were there. <laughs> hey. Awesome. Nice. Cool. Well, um, again, 
the the work here is um, you know this is all in my package roll your own redux so if you just go to mike b lambert roll your own redux um, you can find it and there are these branches here is an example of theoretically oh it's it's because it doesn't exist on there um, but there's an example um, of the actual redux what this would look like in the actual redux and then there's an example with a homemade redux as well um, so just go take a look in there um, if you want to reach out to me here's my twitter uh, i don't have very many followers so uh, help me out here guys uh -huh. uh, and my linkedin um, so yeah feel free to reach out uh, at any point and thanks nice thank you cool. A round of applause for our presenter. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll post the recording, you know, tonight or tomorrow, and I'll post a link to the to the repo as well there. So, thanks a lot. Great okay. job. Cool. Thanks. Have a good Have a good night, everybody. See you later. Yeah.